Welcome to MS Learn Online. I'm Tom Kimball. And I'm Tracy Kimball. We're back to hear more from Dr. Alan Bowling, a neurologist and expert in the world of complementary and alternative therapies. In this webcast, Dr. Bowling and Rick Summers continue their discussion about the options that are available, and Dr. Bowling shares his thoughts on how you can make the right choices for you. I, I think that we as, as MS patients, it's incumbent upon us to think outside the box, maybe not too far outside the box, but certainly within the realms of, of the things that you and I have talked about, because there are some options and relaxation goes a long way into making us feel better as MS patients. Um, what are some of the opposing arguments along those lines of complementary or alternative medicines? Yeah, I think the, uh, the greatest concern is with these biologically based approaches, trying to use those to control the underlying disease process. And with MS, it still is such a mysterious disease, we don't fully understand it. And to start taking random chemicals in the hope it's going to control the disease might actually worsen the disease or might block the effects of medications that you are taking. So that's one of the main uh, concerns is with these biologically based approaches to try to control the underlying disease process. There are other toxicities with various dietary supplements. For nearly all these therapies, you know, the evidence isn't perfect. You know, there is some evidence, as we've talked about, but it's not absolutely perfect. So you do need to be careful to get all the evidence that's available about safety as well as effectiveness. And it's also uh, important for you to be responsible and to communicate with your neurologist, your MS uh, practitioner, because theoretically, if you chose a course of action and didn't disclose, there's a chance it could undermine uh, what your doctor's and your MS center is trying to accomplish. Yeah, exactly. And there's growing uh, information in this area that's actually now more and more accessible to healthcare providers about uh, potential adverse interactions. We want to talk about alternative medicine. You can't get much more alternative than cannabis, medical marijuana. What's your thought? Yeah, I think I always think of that as the, uh, I refer to it as the quintessential alternative medicine topic. Absolutely. So it's, uh, there's some scientific basis to it. There's some clinical studies, may have some beneficial effects. It gets very politically charged. It raises ethical, legal issues. Yeah, it's the uh, classic alternative medicine topic. Like I was saying, there's some underlying science to it that's quite intriguing. So in the 1990s, very solid research established uh, a couple of things. One is that there are very specific proteins in the body that cannabis molecules bind to, mm -hmm. and that's how they produce their effects. And those molecules are on nervous system cells, and they kind of tone down nervous system activity. So could possibly help for things like muscle stiffness or pain where there's too much nervous system activity. Also those protein molecules are on immune cells and when the cannabis binds to the proteins the immune system gets mildly suppressed so in theory could be helpful for the disease process of MS. Uh, and then the other thing that was identified in the 1990s is you know those proteins don't exist just in case someone smokes marijuana in their lifetime. That indicates that we all make our own marijuana-like chemicals. So some very interesting biochemistry to it all. There have been some studies in animals and humans with MS that have raised suggestive findings, but there still is nothing definitive about cannabis helping symptoms of MS or the underlying disease process. Uh, there's a very rigorous study done and being done now with more than 500 people with progressive forms of MS in the United Kingdom looking at uh, cannabis treatment. And we should have the results, I think, in the next year or two on that. Are there warning signs or red flags that we should be looking for for people who are, you know, insistent that I've got a complementary uh, method of medicine for MS patients and this is the answer? Yeah, I think there are a few things uh, that uh, should kind of keep in mind. One is, uh, you know, many people don't have scientific or medical training, but just to be a human and function well in the world, we all use common sense through the day. That may be the, the most common skill we use to kind of get through the day. So if you're being approached by someone or you're reading information about an unconventional therapy, just use a common sense approach. Get a read on who's giving you the information. Do they seem solid? Do they seem like they're uh, being genuine about the information? I think there's some people in this field who 
their main approach, I think, is a rebellion against science or rebellion against conventional medicine. And you can just kind of feel it when you hear them talking or you read the information. I'd be cautious with information in that area. Also, if one treatment claims to be effective for 100 diseases, if you have to go in the hospital, get intravenous treatment, if they're testimonials that sound too good to be true, that may well be the case. They're not you know, and a lot of times it's friends and family who are well-meaning, who, who are struggling watching us go through the MS uh, experience, and they want to solve it. They want to fix the problem. I can't tell you how many pamphlets, how many books that I've had friends and family order online that, that absolutely look legitimate as this is the answer to MS. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate everybody's effort, but, you know, I also know that if there were an answer to MS, it wouldn't be hiding on some book on Amazon.com. I think we'd all pretty much know about it by right, now. Right, right. And I think it can be helpful to develop within yourself maybe five or ten skills to quickly kind of sift through uh, information. We've talked about some of those skills today. Uh, and then you can also go to other information resources. National MS Society has some nice resources. And then if you're still puzzled and you think it might be something legitimate, then talk with your a physician or other health care provider and I, like I said there are uh, there's more access now to objective information about these uh, unconventional therapies so they may be able to help you as well. Okay. Overall how do you find the medical community looks at alternative medicine and uh, complementary methods? Yeah when I first got involved in this I've been interested in it for decades but really got fully immersed 11 or 12 years ago when I first got involved I thought it was really kind of started out in my office and pretty quickly patients around the country kind of heard I had a database of information so there was pretty quickly patient uh, interest in this and then I wasn't honestly I wasn't sure in my lifetime if there was going to be broad-based uh, physician interest but there actually has been the last three to five years so actually I do now as much physician education as I do patient education in this area so I think feels like it's uh, started to shift and if people uh, want to I would encourage people to talk to their physicians about what they're uh, using and if it doesn't go totally smoothly the first time I'd try to keep working on it because it really I can tell you from my contact with hundreds of physicians thousands of physicians it really feels like there's been a shift and this in the medical journals there's more discussion about this so uh, I'd try to work with your provider. If it's really a dead end, they might want to look for uh, other providers. As we wrap up, uh, do me a favor and just summarize from your perspective again what we've been talking about as far as complementary and alternative medicine choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, uh, when they hear me uh, talk and they kind of read information I've uh, written on this subject, you know, often at some point they say, well, do you believe in alternative medicine or not? And that's really not an appropriate question. You know, it's, it's a little like asking someone, asking me if I believe in surgery or not. And, you know, if you have, an, if you have appendicitis, I do yeah, believe in believe surgery. In it, yes. If you're feeling a little anxious, I don't believe right. in surgery for you. So it's the same thing with uh, complementary and alternative medicine. You really need to think of these unconventional therapies within the unique context of MS and then if you do that some of them actually look promising some look ridiculous and dangerous nearly all of them we need to get more uh, research done to truly identify how safe and effective they are in MS even with the limited information now though I think there are ways for people with MS who are interested in doing this to wisely and safely mix some of these unconventional therapies with their conventional therapies and if people are thinking about doing these unconventional therapies that's really the tactic that I would suggest is to wisely pick things that are not going to hurt you may be helpful on the unconventional side and then take the best you can from the conventional side. And again it's one size does not fit all. There's no formula for treating MS right. and it's really got to be individualized. Yeah. Dr. Bowling we thank you for your time and your your insight and your knowledge. I appreciate Great. it. Good. Thank you very much. I want to thank Dr. Bowling for sharing some of his thoughts and ideas. If you are considering unconventional and alternative medicines, there really are a lot of possibilities. That's right. It's exciting and fascinating to explore those options. But again, you'll always want to consult with your doctor before trying them. 
If you want more information on complementary and alternative medicines, check out the National MS Society website. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.